Hello and welcome to Broken Entertainment. Uh, today I'm going to talk about trigger warnings, uh, specifically in relation to books. That are, they exist in some other media as well, but uh, being a writer and someone who's working towards publication, this is something that really interests me specifically with books. Um, so if you're not familiar, trigger warning is where the author or the publisher or just people reviewing will put warnings and say this might upset there there are things that would could potentially really upset someone reading it and some of them are really understandable sexual assault that kind of thing um well for most people might just be like oh that's dark you know like George R R Martin's books for example have that in them uh for others you know, they may have had an un a terrible personal experience and that could bring back unwanted memories. So, some of those are understandable to me. Um, but there's this big push in publishing, uh, specifically among authors and aspiring authors, to put all these labels all over the book. Um, and to me... I don't want to be callous like some people have been and say, oh, well, you know, life doesn't give you trigger warnings, so why should a book? Well, you know, a book is fiction, right? It's a way to break away from the crap you're going through in daily life. So you don't necessarily want to equate it to day-to-day -day life in that regard. Uh, so there's... I came across this book blog and review site and uh, they have an article about trigger warnings and why they're in their mind so awesome. So we'll go over that a little bit, but first my thoughts on trigger warnings are I think there are some that are kind of understandable, like I said. Uh, stuff that's really traumatic that happens in real life and that people could have memories of experience with I'm not talking about like violence but sexual assault uh, anything in that realm really um, I think you can say that violence is generic torture is pretty most people aren't going to go through that, like real torture, not like, oh, this is torturous. Um, that kind of thing, I, don't, I would not put on my book. Um, I do actually have in my science fiction novel that I'm working on, there is a race that does absolutely horrific, terrible things to people and to each other. And... I never go into specifics on it, I just allude to it, and I'm going to put trigger warnings for illusion. Uh, the reason I go into illusion, rather than simply describing a lot of it up front, is that's not really where I want to go with a book. I don't want to be this really dark place, I, but there is this race that is dark that exists in the setting. And interactions with them are less about how the specifics of what they do and more of how they're terrible and why they're terrible. And the fact that they're an exception to the overall rule of the setting, which is that there's no such thing as a species that is good or a species that is bad. There are species that are just, they're, they're people. Some people are good, some people are bad. Um, in the case of one of the main species in the setting, they're generally view them, they tend to view themselves as generally good. Uh, they've kind of had that reputation in the past. But there's a lot of underlying 
stuff that goes on that they just kind of don't talk about. Um, but anyway, with these warnings, to me, a lot of this is SJW garbage. Um, it's, oh my God, you know, oh my God, hate speech, right? That's, that's one of the trigger warnings suggested, uh, for if it's in this article or another one. Um, you don't have the right to be warned about speech. I'm sorry. You don't, because what that does is it puts people off of reading something because like, oh, well, I don't want to read something that's, that's got negative speech in it, you know, and who is the arbiter of what is hate speech and what isn't? That's, that's a very thin line sometimes. So that kind of thing to me, that's, that's garbage. That, that shouldn't be a warning at all. Um, you're going to come across some ideas, hopefully, when you're reading uh, that you're not familiar with yourself and maybe you disagree with, and that's okay. Uh, as an author, I, I want readers to view... To, I want readers to read something, and if they do disagree with it, then they've been exposed to a new way of thinking or some some thoughts they didn't think of before. Now, my books don't get political, but there are allusions to things. There's allegory. And much like Star Trek, when it was good, it made people, th that can make people think, which is fine. It's not lecturing to you. It's not telling you how to think. And in the same way, I don't want people to be warned that a character might have hate speech. If you read something and you think a character says something that that isn't right, that's fine. But let's go through this article um, and we'll kind of see what they have to say. The, there's a lot of uh, typical, stereotypical SJW stuff written all over this. You know, there's the constant use of GIFs. And you got pronouns over here, of course. And just a lot of the way they write. So. You know, hey, trigger warning, right? SJWs. <laughs> um, one of the things that when I read this driving me nuts is that they'll just, like, put giant bold letters everywhere, and that's extraordinarily annoying and distracting when you're reading. Uh, there's a place for it, but when you use it constantly, you know, let's just pick them out here, right? It's constant every paragraph it loses its effect uh, but anyway moving on uh, so what are trigger warnings trigger warnings or content warnings are statements to warn readers of distressing content their pages might contain this can be potentially harm this can potentially harm the reader mentally triggering stressful episodes panic attacks depression and anxiety that's kind of where I fall in with like I said sexual assault Unfortunately, there's way too many people that have gone through that, and that can leave very traumatic experiences in their mind, and that's something you should let people know is coming, but most things that get trigger warnings, hate speech, as a, my biggest example, uh, are garbage. Um, Anyway, by including trigger content warnings in book reviews. Now, uh, doing that in a book review versus having it plastered on the book are two different things. If someone wants to read through a book review and, and leave warnings, whatever. Uh, my biggest issue is having them, the authors do it or the publications do it because it's like saying, hey, here's reasons not to read. So... Moving on, excuse me to be harsh for people saying that old sentence that life has no triggers, so why would books need them is, just, here we go, just privileged, stupid take, I am not on board with, I hate this kind of speech. Um, <laughs> I just, 
I don't need to know if you're on board with it. I need to know why you disagree with it. And just saying it's privileged isn't a disagreement. Uh, life doesn't have any kind of trigger warnings. I agree. Does that mean if you make someone's life easier by mentioning trigger triggers in a book, you shouldn't? See, you're, you're asking a question here rather than answering why this is a thing. Um, thanks to many of my considerate, incredible book blogging friends, blah, blah, blah. It's just more and more. Um, oh, here we go. I can't even begin to explain how thankful I am to some friends telling me that a certain book has triggers, to my sister for reading a book and letting me know, yes, okay, this might be a little stressful. If a book is stressful, just put it down. Like, if it's really just stress, just just put it down. It's okay. Not every book is for everyone. I, I tried a book uh, that was written by someone I was trying to be supportive of because they're a new author and I try to support new authors where I can and it just wasn't for me you know it wasn't poorly written but it wasn't for me so I stopped reading it I didn't make a bad review I just you know okay whatever if it's stressful for you put it down maybe come back later or don't uh, you know it's alright it's it's gonna happen stress happens books particularly fiction are escapism. If your escapism continues or enhances your stress, it's okay to step away from it. Like, I refuse to watch new Star Trek. I'm done with Star Wars, except for the old stuff. Why? Because that does make me stress out. It does make me upset because of my emotional attachment to it. So rather than continue that, I just cut it off. I don't review it, and so I don't get views for that, but whatever. Um, I mean, it doesn't mean I personally won't read the books. If I'm interested in them, it just means that knowing content warnings beforehand allow me to approach book while being... So this has been kind of in video games for a while now. Um to an extent where they'll say cartoon violence, alcohol references or whatever. Um, and that's mostly geared towards parents to know what they're giving their kids. But in, when we're talking about an adult buying a book, you don't need to be... This is not the author's responsibility. The author's responsibility is to write an entertaining book that helps people escape and relieve stress and have fun and maybe think about things a little differently. If you're worried about the right headspace, just don't read it. You know, if you start to read it and you're like, I, I can't deal with this right now, put it down, come back to it later. The author does not need to tell you everything about it they don't need to tell you everything that might cause you stress <laughs> sorry um if no one mentioned any kind of trigger warnings i'd be screwed that's that's just no it's not true sorry you can just put them down and come back later or don't if you really don't like it you know like i don't read game of thrones i never watch the show because a lot of the uh sexual assault and gratuitous, over-the-top violence. I just didn't really care for it. So I didn't watch it. No big deal, right? Doesn't mean it's not good. Um, if no one ever mentioned the heavy trigger warnings in Ninth High, I don't know anything about that book. Um, more about Headspace. And then... This is kind of like an incoherent, like, what can be a trigger warning and what can't, and then saying that different people have different triggers and some things are, uh, I mean, well, that's kind of obvious, don't you think? Um, I 
Therefore, some people choose to brush off content warnings, because why mention them when you might be missing a lot of them anyway? I mean, that that's kind of a valid thing, right? If you start, it's kind of like the LGBTQ th acronym, right? It just gets longer and longer and longer, but everybody knows what you mean. You know, you, you can't cover everything. What are you going to do, have an entire page in the beginning that's just content warnings? need to learn these learn about these kinds of things from listening to others and just being mindful human beings some things that might not seem as content warning territory will be tomorrow because you've learned from another book reviewer another reader's experience uh, okay whatever um they're not spoilery you know just saying there's violence for example in a book doesn't tell you the specifics and you probably already knew it Put your warnings in all my book reviews. It's fine. They're book reviews. Totally different. Um, so really, the, the biggest thing is kind of this tug of war between what is reasonable and what is unreasonable. Reasonable is, to me, actually a very, very narrow window. It's like I said, sexual assault, horrible, traumatic, real experiences that a large number of people in life can have had. Unfortunately, sexual assault is one of them. Violence can be, um, but usually the kind of violence, you know, generally you know from the genre of a book whether or not it's going to be have violence in it you know science fiction fantasy yeah probably going to have some violence in it so do you warn about violence no because the reader should be able to know by the genre alone and by the description the synopsis of the book should make it pretty apparent. I've never picked up a book and read one and gone, oh my god, I'm shocked there was violence in that. I read science fiction and fantasy, I expect it. Right? And some settings in particular. You know, if you pick up a 40k book and you're surprised by violence and darkness, um, maybe you just didn't know much about 40k. That's understandable, I suppose. But... I mean, certainly it's understandable, but generally speaking, it's pretty apparent, even in the synopsis, and 40k has this reputation as being grim dark. If you pick up a book that is grim dark, as a genre, you're gonna see that kind of stuff. But there's a lot of unreasonable, like hate speech, um, violence against specific minorities, um, you know, here, do they have, here we go, content warning database, here's a great example, racial and religious discrimination, um, that's not going to set anybody off, sorry, that's just, disagreeing with someone and then I don't care. you know phobias of different gender beliefs we'll put it that way again people are people are like that not everyone not a majority but they are, and it's okay for an author to write a character who feels that way, especially if they're not a main character. The author is not required to let you know that. If you can't deal with... The, these first two are essentially being unable to deal with people having different ideas than you. Um... 
all mental and physical illnesses and disabilities? It, why do you have to warn someone that there's somebody in a wheelchair in a book? You know, that's what I'm talking about. Sexual content. Again, we're kind of talking about different types. Okay, so they're putting sexual assault under violence. I'm going to put sexual assault. Yeah, sexual assault under violence is fine. Um, I, I don't see any reason for these two. You know, if you're reading it, very rarely does a scene just suddenly happen like that, right? Um... I read a book with some pretty weird crap in it once that I had no idea it was going to be like that. And I was really surprised, but I just skipped it and kept going. You can skip it and keep going. Um, violence, like I said, you're generally going to know in the genre. Um, and in the cases where you don't, Torture can be hard for people, but it's a lot like this. You know, skip it. It's not, for the vast majority of people, it's not likely to cause some sort of huge traumatic freak out. Sexual assault, I think that's reasonable. Um, I'm not going to warn you about gore. I'm not going to warn you about blood. I'm not going to warn you about gore. Those are, if you read something and it's too gory for you, then that's okay. Put it down and move on. I'm not going to warn, warn you about this either. For the same reason. Um, suicide can be hard for people. I, I had a friend who committed suicide. I can still read a book that has it in it, but some people might have, might struggle with that more. I don't think I'd put that under a warning either though and then just whatever so again an idea you don't agree with an idea you don't agree with um natural disasters what? this is the problem with trigger warnings they just expand and expand and expand and it's like okay but what's actually reasonable most of this if you boil it down is not agreeing with something and if you don't agree with something oh well get over it grow up learn to handle it if there's homophobia in a book read it and understand that people are like that and move on it's fiction you know it's homophobia is, is the true homophobia is is a bad thing, but if it's if there's a character that feels that way in a book, it's just a reflection of society. It's a reflection of people. It's a reflection of an idea, and you may disagree with that fundamentally. But to put that on a book as a warning, listen, you need to be. Everyone needs to be exposed to ideas they don't agree with. You don't need to be lectured like Star Trek and Star Wars, but as allegory or as character behavior, exposure to new ideas allows you to either evolve over time or to pit them against your own understanding and enhance your own understanding of things. Good escapism, really good escapism, will allow you to do that subconsciously without being like, oh man, I'm just being beat over the head with this white men bad thing or whatever. You know, there's a distinct difference. Stuff that can truly set people off, real trauma, That there's an argument for that. But you've watered the argument down so much that people just discard it out of hand. And that's what they do all the time with this, this crap. They just water it down, water it down. So everything expands and expands and expands and expands. And then, then normal people go, nah, screw it, I don't care. 
you could have made you could make the argument for some of this but by being overly broad you just make people think you're nuts um wow look at all these tabs okay so th these are just tabs with content warnings it's whatever okay um wow oh well i mean that's a dumb thing to call someone but anyway uh you get the idea hopefully um that there's yeah i think a normal normal people understand the line right where it's okay and advisable even to maybe put a warning on something and when it's just goofy as hell um but warning people about ideas they don't agree with is what causes echo chambers and echo chambers are what causes the crap we're going through right now and what causes places like twitter to be crap so if you are working to be an author if you're an author um think about it i think it's worth considering as you go forward in your writing and, and move forward to the editing phase and so on don't discard it out of hand but understand that a lot of this is just oh I don't agree with this I don't want to be exposed to something I don't agree with so negative for cheese um <laughs> sorry reading some of this I'm gonna close that so I can stop reading it um just so it'll stop, be stop being distracting. So, as an author, like I said, I think it's worth thinking about some of it. But understand where the differences lie. Um, maybe talk about it with your beta readers. Maybe some of them can have some good ideas about if something's really an issue. Uh, because sometimes, as creators were kind of blind to our own content to an extent because you go through it so many times in editing and writing uh, so if you like the video let me know hit the like button and if you have some thoughts on this I'd love to, to see comments on it and, and we can have a discussion uh, consider subscribing to the channel and I will see you next time